This is Mises Weekends with your host, Jeff Dice. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to Mises Weekends. Very pleased to be joined by Daniel Lacaye. Uh, he is a PhD economist. He's also a fund manager. Uh, most recently, the author of a book entitled Escape from the Central Bank Trap, a, a book upon which he just presented a talk at various places in the United States, including the Heritage Foundation. And most importantly for us, he is president of Mises Hispano, the uh, Spanish Mises Institute organization, and he's here to talk to us uh, to make better sense of this Catalonian independence referendum. So, Daniel, thank you. So great to, to see you. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Well, you know, before we get into this, the details, I want to ask you something. This is, we were talking offline, you know, this is not, this is a productive part of Spain. This is not a backwater. We're talking about Barcelona, one of the great European capitals. If this, if independence happened, this would be as big or bigger than Brexit. Would you agree? It is bigger than Brexit because Brexit is about the separation of the two entities that have a long history uh, being separate uh, with completely independent institutions, uh, separate central banks, separate uh, currency, separate, uh, uh, you know, separate institutions completely. Uh, whilst that is not the case with, uh, with Catalonia, and obviously it would create uh, tremendous challenges. I would say that's, that's the biggest challenges the European Union has faced, um, mm. much larger than than Greece or or uh, other of the or the recent elections in France, for example. Well, the European Union seems to have a different stance toward this than it did uh, in the former Yugoslavia, which is now broken up into six or seven countries. Uh, do Do you think the EU is a hypocrite here? Do you think the EU is trying to save itself from embarrassment? What do you think the ramifications are there? Well, I think it's obviously much, it's, it's very different. Yugoslavia was a country that was created artificially. It was a, it was a country that was created in modern history by a, by a dictator, to be fairly honest, uh, from uh, entities that were separate before. You know? right. uh, in this case, it's different. Uh, the, the Catalonia has never been independent. Catalonia, even if you go back to the 1700s, was, was part of the Kingdom of Aragon. So it, it has never be, existed as mm -hmm. a separate entity. Um, but in any case, the, the, after the Franco regime ended, uh, in Spain, we had a the vote uh, for the constitution, the constitution that rules uh, Spain right now. Uh, it was voted massively and supported massively as well in Catalonia. And the constitution in uh, in Spain, democratically voted, as I said, um, uh, gives sovereignty of the country to all Spaniards. It's not, it's not about the, it's never been the union of different uh, separate countries or different regions uh, for political or military uh, reasons. It's, it's, it's something that has been going on for, for many, many years. And that constitution gives the right to uh, historic uh, entities with with strong culture, like uh, the Galicians, like the Basque, like the Andalusians, like the uh, like the Catalans, to express themselves in a in a very very independently. We have a system in Spain called the autonomous communities, that is equivalent to a federal state in which. The uh, these autonomous community, Catalonia is one of them, enjoy uh, a tremendous amount of uh, independence and autonomy. If you think about uh, other autonomous regions in um, in the European Union or in the OECD, even if you think of Canada, uh, there mm -hmm. is uh, the level of of autonomy that the regional governments have is is unparalleled. So that so it's not that the European Union is being um, is is being hypocritical here. Is that it's a completely different uh, different scenario, isn't it? But so so relative to Madrid, would you say Catalonia has uh, um, more power than a U.S. state has relative to Washington D.C.? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. If you think about. Uh, 
what any of the United States uh, has right now um, in terms of uh, w the laws that the parliament of the region can uh, put forward. Uh, including, for example, uh, some of the uh, what is called the Estatut, the 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 the, the rule of the Catalan uh, part mm -hmm. of, of Spain. Uh, it's it's much more independent than any of the states in in the United States, for example. Um, and more importantly, what it does get from being united with the rest of of Spain is actually a benefit that none of the states in the United States gets. Is that none of the regional communities go bankrupt. For example, if you have uh, so, something like what happened in Detroit cannot happen in Spain, because right. you would immediately have the, the support from the central, from the central state. Um, in terms of, for example, none of the states in, in the United States has its own police. Uh, Catalonia has its own police, as you have seen. It's funny that some of the pictures that have that have been shown by by the separatists actually were the regional police uh, behaving badly in 2013, not not two days ago. Um, they have their own police. They have their own uh, collection of taxes uh, uh, at a regional level, which is about 42 billion. Uh, a year in the case of Catalonia, for example. They have uh, their own decisions in terms of infrastructure. They decide completely on how the budget is uh, is, is spent, uh, given uh, what is the, the amount of deficit that is shared between each of the others, according to the to what comes out of Brussels. And, um, and in terms of independence, I say that if you exclude, uh, if you exclude the military, not the police, the military as in mm -hmm. as in uh, defense of the country. There are very few things in which the Catalan government doesn't have uh, more autonomous power than any state in the United States. Well, it sounds like if you just get rid of the EU, you'd be closer to Switzerland than... Uh than uh, anything else. But let me ask you this. We read, you know, we read a lot of things in the media here about the separatists themselves. We read that, yeah. they're, that they're far left. We read that they're center right. We read that it's not a left and right thing. It's, a, it's an urban versus rural thing. We mm. read that it's a young versus old thing. Uh, just give us your overview of the factions involved on both sides. Yeah, I think that none of those statements is correct in general. They may be simplifications. Uh, the separatist movement is very, very recent, actually, if you think about it. Really separatist. As in, as in there, there's one thing that is being nationalistic. We have many nationalistic entities and political parties in Spain that sort of uh, thrive or try to defend the idiosync idiosyncrasy or the, the, the particular uh, culture mm -hmm. of, the, of the region. That is absolutely fine. The separatism itself uh, started with uh, once the the regional government started to be weak the regional government was for more than 30 years uh controlled by the center right of the nationalistic uh, nationalistic parties and that was fine that was uh, they they participated in the national government yeah. and it was a it was a sort of uh, nationalistic uh victimistic in many in many cases but but you know a sort of okay relationship like many others uh, happen what has happened is that there was very there was a, a very big corruption scandal in Catalonia with that ruling party. And it's predominantly called, it's called the 3%. Apparently this party, and it's still being under, under investigation, so it's all uh, uh, part of an investigation, but there's already been uh, numerous people that have been detained. Uh, that party apparently was taking about 3% uh, commission on every single infrastructure project and budget thing that they were passing to, to the private mm. sector. And you know, and, and sharing that that money uh, to to finance illegally the party, and so the party suffered immensely uh, because of that, because of that corruption scandal. So the nationalistic movement started to be taken over by uh, by the more radical part of the of the nationalistic party. So it was the the the, the what is called Esquerra Republicana de Catalunya, uh, Republican Left of Catalonia is a communist, completely communist. I mean mm. they defend Castro, Maduro, uh, actually they went to Maduro has been the only defender of the of the this process mm. uh, in the international uh, community. 
So Esquerra Republicana takes over, and with them comes a very small uh, uh, party that is uh, CUP, uh, the, uh, that that is even more radical to the left. Uh, and you can see in Catalonia and Barcelona pictures of uh, you could see today in the in the general strike more flags of the Soviet Union or of or or, or with the with the uh, with the communist flag than um, with uh, actually with the for example the Republican flag. Um, so it was hijacked. The, the 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 nationalistic movement was taken over by a group that was not. As sort of a commodity to to negotiation, etc., and to look for, a, but but just wanted separation, and more importantly, just wanted separation with their system, and that is why, as a libertarian, uh, I start to get incredibly concerned. Not because we we go from having a uh, an ideal. A view about you know about your region, idealistic, probably romantic. That's fine. Uh, we go from that to uh, very concerning totalitarian messages. If you look at the at the document that they that the that the separatist movement presented as their sort of uh, pre constitutional document, the transition document, it's a document that starts by breaking the rule of law. That starts by breaking uh, the, uh, the the possibility and the defense of private property, and it's and it completely breaks the separation of powers between the government and and the judicial system. Um, so, so that was when it started to be really. It started to get really aggressive, and that has and and this the, all of these together. So the center right, um, the uh, the very left wing. I mean, for for the U.S., let's be very. I mean, we don't even have to talk about it. It's it's completely communist. The communist and the and the uh, uh, populist communists, all of them get together in the elections last year. They have voted six times in the last five years, by the way. So it's not that they don't vote at all. So in the last election, they present themselves as together for yes. Don't spell C. Mm -hmm. huh? Together for the yes. They present all of them together. As a sort of a, of a using a, 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 a using an election, a regional election, as sort of a of a, a of a show of power of the the people that want to defend them that, that de defend the yes for uh, separatism. Okay, they present themselves all of them together and achieve only thirty nine percent of the votes. So without the 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 support. And showing that the, the the rest of the voters were uh, uh, not in favor of, uh, of of the separation, what they decided was to go all the way, and in, and instead of recognizing that that thirty nine percent was not enough and that we had to find a way because at the end of the day we're talking about a region in which it, however you want to look at it. About let's say fifty percent are in favor, fifty percent are against. But but you you cannot rule a region against fifty percent of its people. So they decide that they need to make a referendum. Mm -hmm. Now the problem of the referendum is not voting itself, is that it starts by breaking the law and the constitution that everybody has voted, and that they have the ability to change. They can they can go to parliament, gather enough. Uh, a, a strong enough majority go to parliament and change some articles of the constitution. The constitution is not unchangeable and it has been changed. Is that they decide unilaterally which parts of the law they want to uh, to follow, while at the same time in the transition document they present the impossibility impossibility of any of the smaller parts of Catalonia of seceding. This is a very interesting part because while they 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 defend secession at the same time they by law prevent secession because there are some small parts of Catalonia that have expressed their desire to stay in Spain. So they call for this referendum. The referendum has been a complete joke. They have changed their own uh 
their own terms in terms of how the referendum must be must be presented. I mean, in 75 uh, parts of the region, more than 100 percent of the people voted. It's it's it makes Kim Jong Un uh, a shame. Yeah? So so the problem that that you that you find is is that they are using the subterfuge of voting and more mm-hmm. importantly the subterfuge of secession not for freedom but to impose a very uh, a, a very interventionist and completely uh, anti liberty uh, new state well uh, understanding that l- let's say you're correct that roughly half of catalonia is is somewhat favorable towards secession mm. or, or or maybe even less but nonetheless that's a lot of people that's that's a, f- a few million people um, mm. and, and let's say as a practical matter nationwide within Spain it's very difficult for them to amend the constitution um, th- there has to be a nonviolent from a libertarian perspective there has to be a peaceful sure. mechanism for those even those smaller parts of Catalonia which is actually a fascinating point uh, for for even those smaller parts of Catalonia to break apart and perhaps allow uh, the rest of Catalonia to remain in Spain. In other words, talk about the libertarian principle of self-determination and, and letting people go, R- regardless mm. of whether those people, in our view, as libertarians, make bad choices and, and, and implement a government that's worse. Yeah, I think that the principle is, you, you've said it, it's, uh, of secession is of self-determination. Mm? Self-determination when the secession process is about uh, destroying the ability of individual liberties and of uh, the basic principles, actually, of libertarian. As a libertarian, I, I defend four principles. The first one is obviously rule of law. The second one is uh, the uh, private property. The third one is individual uh, individual rights, and the fourth one is the ability of people to manage their their life more independently uh, further. Now, if if I strip the other three and only look at secession, I am missing obviously uh, seventy. Uh, 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 I'm missing seventy five percent of the picture. The problem that I find here is that it is not about secession because think about it when we libertarians talk about secession, we're talking about the ability of people to manage their life better and manage their uh, day-to-day with more freedom, not just for the people, for a group of people, but for individuals. If uh, that, if you use secession to reduce the civil liberties of people, and if you uh, use secession to increase intervention from the part of the state, that is not the, the principle of secession that we believe in. More importantly, think about it. It's not like they're saying we're going to leave the European Union and we're mm-hmm. going to have our own currency, our own central bank, our own taxation system. No, none of that. It is about being in the European Union and seceding. So what is the difference? So what is the difference? Imagine from what I'm here, where I am today, as a, as a citizen in Spain, to where I would be. The only difference, it's not about freedom, it's about bureaucracy, it's about intervention. It is that what they want, because in terms of independence, they have had 35 years of uh, experience as a, as a, as a, a more than independent uh, uh, semi-state. And from, a, from the perspective of civil rights, this is what has happened. Catalonia is one of the regions with the highest level of tax wedge in Spain not lower, higher. With more independence, they have increased the tax wage on individuals. Catalonia is also a region in which if you have a business, a small business, and you uh, decide to put the signals and your adverts in Spanish Mm -hmm. only, uh, you will be fined. So it is not about improving the, okay. the the uh, the life of people. It is about controlling people. That is my problem with not only but and by the way, it's not only with this secession. There is another problem with secession with secessionist movements in Europe in particular and in Spain uh, as uh, as an example today is that they're not about seceding. They are secessive. Sorry, they are they're about secession and imperialist. They want to separate and add. 
they want to add to they they call the what they call the the Paisos Catalanes, the Catalan countries. They want to add Valencia. They want to add the Balearic Islands. So <laughs> you see, it has very little to do with everything that we defend. So once if we only think about secession itself right. from the principle of somebody like Ludwig von Mises, who's first the the thing that he as 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 somebody that was that was a visionary always saw as the biggest threat to the world, which is socialism and communism. To me, that is the problem, is that I cannot defend this because it drives the other. But if the secessionists are so bad, if they're higher tax, if they're bigger government, mm -hmm. if they're even socialists or communists, there's also an argument for you as a Spaniard getting rid of them. Because right now, they're, they're somewhat diluting Spanish politics, right? They're involved... Uh, mm -hmm. As long as, as Catalonia is part of Spain, um, their representatives have a vote in national uh, parliament, mm -hmm. and, and so they, they can affect you. What, what about the argument for, from, from mm -hmm. the Spanish side? Yeah, it's a, I think you made a good point, and I think you made a very good point in your article, saying maybe half of the voters in the United States feel in a similar way right now because of the divisiveness with the Trump administration or not. But I, as a Spaniard, I don't want the, the if I was an American, I would not want to uh, secede my, my, the, some of the states that have voted for one party relative to another. What I want is to fight mm, to get all of us uh, better uh, uh, in, that, in, that, in, that, in, in, in the things that I defend. So the point that I make, that, and that is obviously my personal opinion, but if I'm a Spanish person, I know that secession is a very negative uh, economic and in every, in every single terms event. It's, a very, it's going to be a very negative event if it happens. Hopefully it will not. Um, for the rest of Spain, for Catalonia itself, and, you know, in general. So what I want to do personally, and this is my opinion, is, okay, I have two options. I can renege of my country and decide I, I personally don't like the many of the policies that the conservatives or the social democrats impose in my country. I'm complete. I suffer the taxation system. I pay for all our listeners. I pay more than 50 percent of my revenues in taxes. But I what I want to uh, fight the battle so that everybody gets better. I don't want to say, look, you know, uh, you can commit suicide on your own. I want to because I think that there is there is something that is that that we all gain from being together, and that is a lot that we lose from being separate. Well, I, I I understand your argument. I think there's a counter argument, which is that that's a tactical approach. That's a matter of strategy. At some point. We might well decide in America that trying to convince 320 million people of, of the liberal program is not so easy and maybe convincing 30 or 40 or 50 million of them in a region mm -hmm. is easier. But that's, that's, that's a question for people who are smarter than me. If I may on that point, I agree. Okay, that's fine. You know, if, I, if, if tomorrow mm -hmm. uh, we are able to find a region or a country in which the vast majority, as well as us, uh, defend the principles of as little government as possible, mm -hmm. complete uh, individual freedom, et cetera, et cetera. Like some, you know, some parts of Honduras are doing, et cetera, with these, with these uh, sort of separate entities, whatever. Ha very happy to defend it. Very happy to defend it. What I, what I don't see is why. Um, is, is in such a complex matter, mm, we need to pay attention only to the right of secession and not to all other civil rights. I think that that is the problem, is that if I, uh, I, uh, I, I, I pay attention to, to what people believe that they like about their region, and I'm completely, I can, I can understand their position. Mm -hmm. I can understand the position of uh, a party that mm, wants to implement a uh, Bolivarian uh, uh, communist uh, republic in the center of, uh, of the European Union. I can understand that. I'm not willing to accept it when there's 7% of the voting uh, population, but they make more noise than the other 73, uh, sorry, 93%. I'm, that is what I'm, because then what I am doing is not being selfish. 
is that I am being uh, that I'm just uh, 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 that I'm just playing to the objectives of the separatists. Uh, this is an important factor. Is that um, if if tomorrow I had a clear, uh, an absolutely clear picture that uh, there is a a uh, definitive way of getting for for them uh, more more uh, more uh, individual freedom. That's what I'm working for, actually. You know, I, I, I'm all the time in the media in Spain, in the media in the U.S., as you know, in the U.K., etc. What I defend for Catalonia is more individual rights for them. What I defend for Catalonia is that the, their government, whatever it is, um, has more autonomous power that when citizens see that their tax wages higher, they can blame the, their government and not use subterfuge of, a, uh, subterfuge of an external enemy, that is fine. But, but secession doesn't solve that, you see? And more importantly, it leaves too many people, too many people behind. Let me ask you this. Uh, were you shocked at all by the actions of the Madrid government, just the optics of it? The, uh, we say, see the, uh, the national police, the Guardia Civil, uh, we saw some policemen in polling stations. We saw some people arrested and injured. Um, it, it's hard to say without being there how widespread it was. Did you find any of that shocking? Well, I found I find that the that it I I, I never this is more important that more, I never condone any type of violence from the side of the police, but I don't con condone any type of violence from the side of the groups that are pushing the limits on something that has already been called null and void, illegal, uh, uh, that uh, using property that is not theirs, that is public property, using um, uh, all the subterfuge uh, that I was talking about before. Um, so I, I remember when I lived in the United States, I lived in Chicago, and I lived in, in, in New York, or I lived in the UK. Um, if you if you're consistently breaking the law, particularly in countries as free as the United States and f coming from the European Union perspective or the UK, I mean, you break the law. You you are not going to go uh, lightly out of it. But I don't. But I I think it was mishandled. I think it was mishandled completely because the way this is personal opinion. But the way that I would have done it was to wait for this uh, charade to happen and then come with the facts that I have presented on every single on my website and on my uh, on, on my Twitter accounts and on Facebook, the facts of 100.88% of votes counted, 90% yes, uh, mm, uh, municipalities where more than 100% of the uh, of the voters uh, passed. But there's a problem to that because it happened before. Because this has happened before, and there were pictures of people voting three, four times, five times, etc. Is that they don't care? So see, see the use, the use that the separatist movement makes out of allegedly democratic instruments is very, very, very concerning. And I am, and I'm completely, completely, completely against the police action when it has been completely uncalled for, but. You have to. You, I, I would. I would recommend to any of our uh, our viewers or readers to go to Barcelona and do this exercise. Just say, just take a f Spanish flag, wave it, see what happens to you. Just do that, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. You you will understand it more because if you're in the United States, you've just actually all this was happening when I was in the United States with all this uh, uh, debate about the flag and the NFL players, mm -hmm. etc. But you have seen it with these fights between the Antifas and the uh, and the white supremacists, etc. Is that the way in which these uh, things are used in tweets, in little videos, etc., to uh, uh, twist the argument in favor of one or the other is amazing. But I was uh, I was in the Occupy Wall Street uh, period in in New York. I was when the, the time of the Occupy Wall Street. <laughs> and tell you that what happened last Sunday in 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 uh, in Barcelona, no comparison. And I'm not condoning either. But I'm just saying that it has been 
it was something that the separatist movement was waiting to happen, to use it mm. from a media perspective. They've done it phenomenally. Mm. Hats off to that from a manipulation and from a, let's say, a narrative uh, standpoint. It has happened before. We had it in the Basque country in which the terrorists were uh, portrayed internationally as as freedom fighters. We've had it um, in, in other occasions. We've had it in Northern Ireland. We've had it in Scotland. But what I'm saying is that uh, I, I never defend the utilization of force, and uh, but there is a there. The, I don't accept that the only image that we're seeing is that without understanding the daily grinding, absolutely asphyxiating uh, violence, political violence that the separatists uh, 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 impose on the ones that are not that are not separatists, which shows you why your probably next question is why the other 50% don't make massive demonstrations because of work because everywhere you are completely completely absorbed by this by this message and that is a, a, an unfortunate situation that has nothing to do with freedom so i i again and i want to make this very very clear any uncalled police action any aggression is to me unacceptable but a every aggression that I have lived and suffered in Catalonia by the separatists is something that has been going on for many, many years quietly, and they present themselves as freedom defenders. No, my son. No, my friend. No, they're not. They are not at all. They are not at all. And this is the and this is what I'm seeing in the U.S. When I came from the U.S., I was on the plane talking with a friend, and he was saying, "I can't believe that the Europeans are seeing these antifas." as uh, freedom fighters when they're uh, when they're complete totalitarians they are they are and i say look you know welcome home because i'm in the same side because i'm see i am being told that the freedom I, I had been told when i was a teenager that the freedom fighters were the terrorists in the basque country and now i'm being told that these people that are that have signs all over barcelona saying let's signal them in which the, the government sent uh, leaflets saying, take notes of the neighbors that you believe will not participate mm. in the referendum. My friend, this has nothing to do with voting. The voting part is a subterfuge. And that's why I think that, you know, and more importantly, that, that's why we have, to, we have to look at a bigger picture. And I think that today, uh, the, many of, the, of, the, of different parties from, from the left, from the right, intellectuals, etc., are really raising their voices about this, this problem. That is why secession is sort of like this small part of a very, very complex and very dangerous picture. Well... Daniel, one last question. You wrote this article on Catalonia independence that I thought was, was really amazing. The analysis here is really unique because you talk a lot about Catalonian bonds and credit risk and what this all might mean in terms of the economy, not just for Catalonia, but also for Spain, also for Europe. Uh, there could be an effect, uh, much like with Greece, um, much like with Italy and their own bond debt and the consequences of that. Um, but you sort of lay out three scenarios, and I just want to get your brief uh, closing comments on this. One scenario is that uh, there's a, a declaration of unilateral secession, which you opine will have very negative, bad economic consequences. Uh, a second scenario is nothing happens, but tensions and protests remain high, which uh, again has some negative consequences for the greater economy. But a third is that secession doesn't happen, but there is some sort of negotiation between Madrid and the separatists that results in some kind of understanding or new financing for the bonds and, and, and that this would be the, the best of the three scenarios. So what do you think is likely to happen next now after the vote? Uh, unfortunately, I think they will declare unilateral really? uh, secession. Unfortunately. Yes. Interesting. It doesn't matter that the vote is completely, I mean, you, you, I, I just tweeted from an international observer, uh, a Dutch international observer that was appalled by the whole thing, um, what the, the article that he published in El País. Uh, and and it's, uh, it's very sad. It, they will likely do that. Um, 
it will not be recognized by the European Union, it will not be recognized by the United States, it will not be recognized by Spain, and therefore it's a combination of the first and the second uh, scenario that I was make, making, because they will declare it, no one will, will uh, recognize it, but tensions will remain precisely because no one will recognize it. And if they make a unilateral declaration of independence, the central government, according to the constitution, can revoke some of those mm -hmm. powers that the regional mm -hmm. government has. And that's what I don't want. You see, what I want is more independence for Catalonia. What I don't want is idiocy. Um, and I think that the, a solution that we have actually proven to see that works with the Basque country is to get them a financing agreement by which the level of control that they have is is even higher. Hmm? It goes. It is literally. I mean, I was looking at the at the very sad events in Puerto Rico and the economic implications and what Puerto Rico has and doesn't have in terms of access to to the United States. No, I mean. What 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 the Basque country or, or the Catalan region would have, what the Basque country has, is a financing system that is that is basically just literally being independent in every form that you can be, as long as you want to remain in the European Union. Let's mm -hmm. all remember that this is based on the fact that all of these separatist movements want to be in the in the European Union. That I've never understood, to be fairly honest, because. If I'm if I'm completely libertarian, the first thing that I want to do is to be out of the European Union, which would give me tremendous freedom to do all those things. But this is not the case. There, I mean, the, and it is actually the opposite. They want to remain at all costs in the European Union, and that's why I lay out the risks because they would not be, hmm? and you know, and all the problems that that that, that sort of entails. Well, Daniel Lacaye, thank you so much for your time. If, if further events unravel, we, we'd love to have you back on the show to talk about this and anything else uh, re, re, with regard to uh, the, the Fed and central banks and other topics in which you, you have such tremendous broad knowledge. Uh, we appreciate your time, especially in this late evening for you in London. Ladies and gentlemen, have a great weekend. Subscribe to Mises Weekends via iTunes U, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, or listen on Mises.org and YouTube.